Good morning. My name is Jane Prine and welcome to Rise and Prine on this early Friday morning. We're excited to have you here and I have two wonderful guests with me, um, part of the cabinet that I work with on a daily basis and I see them frequently throughout the day because I always have questions and I'm always popping in their office or they're popping in mine. Um, I would like to introduce Darlene Appland, who is our Director of Finance and Operations, and Victoria Ballant, who is our Human Resources Director. Both huge jobs that keep the district running smoothly. So, Darlene, I'm going to ask you a question, kind of a little icebreaker. If you were a pair of shoes, what kind would you be and why? Okay, well, I think that I would be a pair of flip-flops and uh, sandals if the flops don't qualify, but I love flip-flops. And um, I love the ocean, the sand, the warm breeze, the sunshine. Um, the best time um, in the Pacific Northwest is late spring, summer, early fall. Um, definitely the best time to wear flip-flops. But if I could be, wear flip-flops year-round, I would. So we need to buy her a pair of socks with toes in them. So she can wear her flip-flops all year round. And you know, they have some really cute socks. They probably match every outfit mm -hmm. you own. Good. Thank you. And Victoria, if you were a pair of shoes, what kind would you be and why? <laughs> if I were a pair of shoes. Well, I guess I'm at the stage of my life where I'm not, not quite practical pair of shoes, but I'm going to tell you it's been a long time since I've wanted to identify with a pair of stilettos. So I think if I were a pair of shoes, I'd be a nice, like, chunk heeled pump you know beautiful color maybe with a little ankle strap to give it a little something something extra um you know high enough so that you know they look good with a pair of trousers or, or skirt but also I could run if I had to so I, I think that would I, I identify mostly with a nice pump with that with that chunk heel do you have a particular color well the color in my head is like a deep burgundy oh mm -hmm color in my head was like shiny black. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you. And now, Darlene, um, we have been, um, you know, in a pandemic. You have been here for almost, th uh, well, just about three years. What can you tell us that are um, some bright spots in the business office? Well, I have to say the bright spots in my business office are my coworkers. And um each one of them takes pride in their job and doing the very best that they can and making sure that their work is done without error. So they're always striving to be positive and uh, helpful and want to gain in knowledge, always searching for professional development. I really appreciate that about them. Good. Well, and it helps because you don't want them to make mistakes because that's our paychecks, right? That is true. <laughs> that's our budget. Those are our numbers. Yes. So we appreciate all that the business office does and everybody in the business office. Thank you. And then we come to human resources where it deals with all of our people. So Victoria, what are your bright spots? Yeah, I absolutely agree with Darlene. I mean, the two brightest spots are the ladies on my team. We've really only been working as a trio for about a year, as two of the three of us are actually new to Squim School District. So we're still in a season of calibrating to one another and reimagining systems that work within our strengths. But both of the ladies that I work with are highly competent professionals. I am so thankful to have them on my team. We really can lean on one another, um, bounce ideas back and forth, and I just trust them. Thank you. Yes, and uh, Human Resources is forever uh, dealing with all of us, so thank you. Um, now, Darlene, we're going to go back to a little personal question. What are three of your favorite authors and why? Well, uh, one of my favorites is J.A. Jantz, and she's a, a mystery writer, and she's actually a local person. And uh, Francine Rivers, she's another one of my favorites. She writes really great uh Christian fiction-based books, but they are, deal with real-life tragedy but have a, a really great ending that gets my heart. And Sandra Brown, mystery writer with a little bit of romance thrown in there and um, fun to read. So I see a theme through there that you like mystery with a little bit of love tagged in there. Yep, that's, that's about it. <laughs> and people are resilient <laughs> at the end. That's right. Happy endings, always good for happy endings. And um, how about you, Victoria? Well, 
I'm going to say that one of my favorite authors is Jane Austen. And here's the thing. There's nobody who writes a happy ending like Jane Austen can write a happy ending. Those books end with everybody getting everything that they ever wanted. And they're deliriously happy. So I, I love it. It all comes together in the very last page. And it's, oh. so anyhow. And then my other favorite um, really books like genre would be kind of self-help, inspirational leadership type books. I love Byron Katie, Brene Brown, Jen Sincero, Eckhart Tolle, Stephen Covey, Jim Collins, just to name a few. And I also adore all things magical and dystopian post-apocalyptic written for young adults. I have to say, I'm going to say this, may the odds be ever in my favor while I perform my Patronus charm to ward off the Dementors. <laughs> so, you know, and I don't know really what this says about me, but I, I think it says that I do believe that things can always get better, especially my own self, and that also I, I believe miracles can happen. Well, then those glasses that Ashley gave you yesterday that are pink with the bling on them are yes. perfect. They're rose-colored yes. glasses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And finally, Darlene, what changes have you had to make in your department during this COVID-19 pandemic that have helped you navigate and has moved the department and yourself forward? Well, we've all had to uh, figure out how to work remotely, uh, work remotely and in the office, but we're all separated. And I think that it's really helped us realize that we can come up with a system to work together to keep our workspace healthy. And um, we have figured out that, you know, sometimes we can work from home. And, and I know that a couple of the people in our office really like that because they can get a lot of things done in a shorter amount of time. Um, I also think that our office communication, it, while it's been strong, it's been made stronger because we've had to figure out different ways to communicate with one another and um, stay in contact with one another so that we can share our spaces safely. Thank you. And Victoria, how about you? You came and three weeks later or a month later, we shut down. So you have been mainly in the pandemic mode of working in the Squim School District and we're now just back to work in the last couple of months. So what has it been like for you? Yeah, you're right, Dr. Prine. That has been a challenge. I always think of, you know, your first year in an organization, you're really getting to know the lay of the land, you're getting to know the processes and the systems. And just, it was actually six weeks in, everything shut down. So I feel like I haven't had that full circle around the sun yet with Squim School District. So I feel like I'm still kind of a newbie learning some systems because we haven't really been able to do what we normally do. Um, so I'm looking forward to reaching a point where we're back in flow and I can get a, a better handle on what it, what it is that's really happening here in Squim School District. I have appreciated how nimble we have become. We've shifted from remote to on-site and then some hybrid version thereof several times. We have learned how to have effective staff meetings, whether we're together or in person or together on screen. And although meetings behind screens are still not my favorite, I found they can be a wonderful altern alternative to what could have otherwise just been a phone call from my desk. So I can actually have a virtual face-to-face -face with staff in our buildings in a moment's notice. So I kind of think of it as my port key to transfer me to where I need to be, wherever I need to be there. But I am definitely looking forward to getting back to some sense of what's normal. And I kind of can see that glimmer on the horizon coming our way. And one of the challenges I think specifically in the HR department is we rely heavily on a lot of things to guide our work. Well, I mean, we all do, but, you know, we have our collective bargaining agreements and we have the RCWs and the WACs and the board policies and all of the things that we really lean on. And then when there's a pandemic, there has to be a lot of exceptions to what are otherwise rules. And the rules are comfortable. Because then we know it's black and white. We do this, then this, then this, then this. But when some people can work remotely and some people can't, it doesn't 
it's hard to navigate that because we in the HR department are all about equity and making sure that our employees are always, they always feel treated with dignity and respect and fairness. And this has been a year where there's just been a lot of exceptions to the rule. And I cannot wait until there are not so many exceptions to the rule because when we are trying to make wise decisions we take all the information we have at this moment to make the best decision we can and then we have to step out in faith and hope it's a good one and hope it works so um that's been a challenge so on that note, I want to thank Darlene and Victoria, our cabinet, for coming in and meeting with us this morning. And we want to wish all of you a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend and the week ahead. Thank you. Join us next week as we continue with the It Takes a Team series. Thank you for listening and have a fantastic Friday, Squim.